Good morning, Fayette family. And echo Adam and welcoming our visitors as well. Glad to have you with us. This is the time in our service that the elders have set aside for us to partake together of the Lord's Supper and memorialize the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. If you don't have the emblems, they're out front in the foyer. You can raise your hand. Somebody, I'm sure, will be happy to bring them to you. I'm always afraid I'm going to get up here and have forgotten it. And the reason I'm afraid of that is because I did that one time. But I've got them. If you need them, let us know. So in the adult class on Sunday mornings, we've been studying, of course, the book of John. Adam's doing his kind of normal job, which is outstanding. It's normal for Adam. He doesn't like that, probably. But, uh, but we've been studying John. We've read John this morning, and uh, it's no small wonder that John is where I'd like to focus a little bit this morning as we think about our Savior. If you would, let's turn to chapter one, the book of John. I'd like to read verses one through nine. If you would please follow along with me, John chapter one, verses one through nine. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Now, these verses are familiar to most Christians. In fact, I think a lot of us can quote John 1, verse 1, as easily and quickly as we can quote Genesis 1 and verse 1. No doubt some of you can probably recite all nine verses that we just read. And that's good. We should know these verses. This is a beautiful section of scripture that is, of course, a description of Jesus, a description of our Lord and Savior. Now, I've heard it said that when you see something repeated in the gospel, when you see something repeated in God's word, you ought to pay attention to that. And there's a word that begins to stand out as you read through this passage. If you would quickly, let's look at verses. Let's go back to the scripture, but start in verse four. I want to read four through nine again. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light. He came to bear witness about the light, the true light, which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And the word light is used seven times in, in just six verses there. In fact, the word light is used about 30 times in the book of John, depending on the translation. And so it's fairly obvious then that light's an important concept here, as it is all throughout the Bible. We're told that Jesus is the light of men, that he is the true light, and that he gives light to everyone. And we see light constantly. Throughout the Bible. Brother Dempsey has mentioned before that the Bible begins and ends with marriage. It also begins and ends with light. Obviously, Genesis 1 3, when the Lord speaks light into existence, and then in the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22 and verse 5, they will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light. So let's think about light a little bit this morning. There's lots of different ways that light physically affects us. And we talked about this a little bit the first day of the John class on Sunday morning. But I like to think about the way light impacts us emotionally and mentally, kind of, kind of what it does to us and for us from an emotional standpoint. And I just have some examples that I think will be familiar to all of you. We've all had that feeling of being in a strange place. Maybe it's a hotel room or your friend's house, somewhere you haven't slept before. And you wake up in the middle of the night, you need to find the light switch. 
And it's usually right here, but you seem to touch everywhere but right there, right? And you can't find it. And then you finally do. Flip that great sound, the flipping of a light switch when you really need to find it. And so in an instant, you go from having great anxiety to immediate relief. It's a great feeling when you find that light. And so we see that in an instant like that, the light can take away our anxieties. I don't know how many of you like to go camping, but my family and I love to camp. And sometimes you don't get to the campsite as early as you meant to. You get there in the dark, right, Matthew? And so now you're in the woods at night. I love the woods, but the woods at night are scary to me. I'm not, a, I'm not a, embarrassed to admit it. So the first thing I like to do if I get to my campsite late is hang my lantern as high as I can and turn it on. And then just like that, what was a dark and scary place where I was afraid is now lit, warm, and inviting, just like that. And so the light can take away our fear. How about these dark and dreary winter days? I told Missy when I was preparing for this, I was like, looks like I'm gonna have a good day for this example. They just like today. And we, we have these sometimes several in a row, right? And not even snow, which I think is fun and pretty, just gray, cold, dark, can make you sad. It does make people sad. Parts of the country where it doesn't, where it rains a lot, they have more depression than other areas. But then there's that day where you look out the window or you walk outside and the clouds part and the sun pours down through and you are just filled with happiness. Again, just like that. Wish you could bottle that feeling when the sun breaks through the clouds after days of dreariness. And so the light brings us happiness when we're sad. My last example is the idea of being found when you've been lost. Maybe one reason I'm scared of the woods at night is because I've been lost in the woods at night before. And I don't mean like a little neighborhood wood. I mean Daniel Blue National Forest. Lost. Cold, dark, it's about two in the morning. I've been out there for a while. It was 20 years ago, but I remember it very well. And the most vivid image I have of that event I was down kind of in a little valley by a creek and I looked up on a hillside and what did I see snaking down the trail? Lights. And I knew that I'd been found. I knew I'd been saved. So I was having all three. I was having anxiety. I was having fear. I was certainly sad. And those lights took that all away in an instant. So we see a light can bring us relief from our anxieties. It can assuage our fears, bring us happiness in sad times, and it can save us when we're lost. Is it any wonder then that Jesus is described as light? He does all those things for us, doesn't he? John 8, 20, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we as Christians are blessed to be able to benefit from the light that is Jesus Christ. We can have our anxieties relieved. We can have our fears subdued, our sadness overcome. And most importantly, we can be saved from the lost state of being in sin. And why is that? Why is that possible? Well, that's what we memorialized this morning. That's possible because he was willing to come to earth, live as a mortal man, be unjustly tortured, unjustly sentenced to death, face the unimaginable torment and pain, physically and emotionally, of taking on our sins, though he was sinless. Jesus was and is the light of the world. and Everything he did was in obedience to God's plan to save us. Everything he did while he was on earth was leading up to the events that we remember this morning. John 1 verse 5 again, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That's written in the present tense, not the past. And that's a comforting thought to me. 
As we partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine this morning, let's be thankful for the light of the world. Be thankful that he came and that he banishes the darkness from our lives. You would please bow with me as we give thanks for the bread.